I'd like to take your attention to the book of Zephaniah. I'm sure a lot of people read from that book. Book of Zephaniah, if you have the right Bible, is page 813. Book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 14 through 17. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord hath taken away thy judgment. He hath cast out, cast out thine enemies. The King of Israel, even the Lord, is in the midst of thee. Thou shalt not see evil any more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee. With joy he will rest in his love. He will give joy and he will sing over thee. Large place music occupies in the scripture. Bible is filled with the songs of praise and worship to our God. When we sing about our Lord, Bible wants us to know who is our God. Bible wants us to know what he has done for us. Singing is mentioned over 400 times in the word of God. Old Testament is a hymn book with 150 hymns. We as Christians, we sing to remember God's word. We sing to respond to God's grace. We sing to reflect God's glory. The feeling that music produces will fail, but the living word of God that we sing in our worship will continue to work in our hearts. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we sing the scripture, it renews our faith. It strengthens our faith. It renews our mind. If you want to know what people really believe about God, listen to what they sing. Listen to what they say. Listen to how they pray. I'm talking about the song of the Lord. Atheism is songless. They have nothing to sing about. They are without God. They are without Christ. They are without redemption. Christians, born again people, are the true singers. Why do you suppose that is? It is because our author is a singer. God himself is a singer. Did you know that God sings? Music is a creation of God. It is a high gift to the born again person. He built the music scale. It has seven notes. The number of perfection. God is the author of music. Music is the only art of earth that we will carry to heaven. Let me take your attention to Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. The song of the Lord. The Lord thy God is in thy midst. The singer of the song is my Savior. He's a personal God. He's a present God. He's a present help in the time of need and trouble. The Bible says He's in thy midst. Our God is a personal God. He is a present God. He's a powerful God. The Bible says He's mighty. He's a pardoning God. He will save. The singer of the song is our Savior. The subject of the song. You know, we all have to have subjects. Christians, may I be very honest with you? I have problem with Christians who pray and they do not say in the end of their prayer in the name of Jesus. It's almost a fad. It's almost like we are talking to somebody we don't know. You know, I have problem with songs that sings like Spirit of Baba, Father of Baba. Let me tell you this. The one I serve, he's got a name. His name is Jesus. He's a powerful God. He's a personal God. He's a pardoning God. You know what God chooses to sing about? God sings about you and me. The Bible says he sings with joy over thee. The subject of the song for my God are the people who are being born again. We are his subject. If you talk about the singer of the song, the subject of the song, then we are like to talk about the sequel of the song. The sequel of song is obvious. If he sings over us, then we as born again people are obligated to sing for him. It is a command. Christians, 
the only true weapon that the, the devil cannot counterfeit. Let me repeat again. The only two weapons that the Satan cannot counterfeit. One is praise. The other one is prayer. If we know how to praise God, and if we know how to pray, we can bring down the strongholds in our life. Some Christians I know, they like to be dignified when it comes to worship. You know, I, I love American culture, though I'm not American, I'm a FBI, a full-blooded Indian. But you know what? When I first came to your country, I thought most of the Christians are supposed to act dignified. Now, there is a dignify, uh, difference between being dignified and pertified. Now, I saw the saints who come Sunday morning. They hardly raise their hands. They hardly get excited. On Friday, I saw the same people that I saw Sunday morning at the Little League baseball game. Uh-oh, they got a tail hanging out. They got a hat, and they're there for their grandson, cheering for him, who never even hit one ball. But now we as Christians, we have problem to come to the house of the Lord and worship him. Friends, if you're a born-again child of God, he has given you a new song. He has given you a reason to sing. Did you know in the Bible, the first song that is mentioned is book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 30 to 31. That is the first song ever mentioned in the Bible. Is when people of God were rescued from Egypt and they were brought to the Holy Land. Why did they not sing in Egypt? Because in Egypt, they were not saved. When he saved them out of bondage, they had a reason to sing. May I say this to you? If you do not have a song in your heart, don't get discouraged. Tonight you can leave this place singing a new song. God can put a new song in your heart if you come to Him and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, save me a sinner, forgive me of my sin. Do not forget that people in Egypt cannot sing. But people, when they're saved by the Lord, they have a new song. As I conclude tonight, I like to just share this with you that the unsaved and the backsliding people, they have no song. The lost, the backslidden people, they do not have a reason to sing. But if you are a child of the King, you can sing. You can sing even in the midst of your heartaches. Look at Paul and Silas in the prison, in the midnight. The Bible says God gave them a song in the night. In the darkest hour, the only person I know in this world who can give you a new song, that is Jesus of Nazareth, he will give you a new song. He will give you a reason to rejoice over trouble. Friends, I'm talking from experience. One of my desire is one day, Lord, give me the honor to die a martyr's death. I want to die preaching the gospel of Christ in the nation of India. Because I believe that the blood of the martyrs are the seeds for new churches. If you are a child of the king, one day when we get to heaven, we will sing, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wonders, strength, honor, and glory. But you say, Brother Thomas, tonight I say to you, that I am not able to sing that new song. I don't want you to leave this place with that negative thought. I'm living in bondage. How can God of the universe give me a new song? Many years ago, it was the privilege of mine to preach in a central jail in southern India. When I was in that jail, we had by the way, almost 6,500 people. One of the things I like about speaking in jail is a captive audience. They don't have to go anywhere. So when I was speaking there, I gave the invitation to them. And I said, anybody here today want to accept Christ? 
Today is the opportunity. He will give you a new song. Who is singing? God is singing. Who is he singing? He's singing about you and me who have been redeemed by his blood. Since he's singing about us, we are obligated to sing about him. I met this lady in the central jail. She comes to me and says, Mr. Thomas, I heard you preach tonight. I want you to know I'm not afraid of this prayer. Policemen, all these men with khaki uniform, I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of them carrying this big bamboo stick which they used to beat the prisoners. I'm not afraid of them. Please, I would like for you to pay attention to this. We have come to the most sacred part of the meeting tonight. She looked at me and said, Mr. Thomas, I'm not afraid to sleep on this concrete floor. I don't mind sleeping without a pillow. But after hearing you, I want to confess this to you. Several months ago, my husband, when I gave birth to my baby girl, the day, the moment he found out it was a baby girl, he said to me, if you want to come back home, you would have to kill this child. In India, majority of the people, the, farm, the moment they find out it's a baby girl, majority, they will abort those children. So she said, if you want to come back home, I would like for you to kill the baby in the hospital, and then you are allowed to come home. She said, Mr. Thomas, I'm not afraid of this prison bars. I'm not afraid of the strictness in the bar. I'm not afraid of even they give us one meal a day in the prison. But when I squeezed the neck of my daughter, those brown eyes were looking at me. When I go to the restroom, those brown eyes are looking at me. When I sleep at night, those two brown eyes are looking at me. When I sit in this prison, those two brown eyes are looking at me. Can you tell me who can forgive me of that miserable sin? I says, ma'am, the only person I know in this world, his name is Jesus. Jesus can forgive you. I had the privilege of leading that lady to Christ. After she was forgiven, the ministry of hope givers poured out the money and we got her out of prison. Today, that lady is an instrument in God's kingdom in establishing 11 churches. She got a new song. She got a new song. Who gave that new song? Jesus of Nazareth. Who can forgive you? Jesus of Nazareth. Who can give you a reason to live? Jesus of Nazareth. Friends, all around us there is trouble. But when you know... Jesus is the Savior, the Master of your life. You have nothing to worry. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Let's bow our heads. All heads bowed and eyes are closed. No one looking around. Please, all the children who are playing, would you just pause for a minute? I would like to take this opportunity to tell you tonight... You say, Brother Thomas, I don't have a reason to sing. I don't have a new song. I'm miserable. Who will forgive me of my sins? Tonight I tell you, Jesus of Nazareth is reaching out. With his nail-pierced hand, he will say, Son, come home. Daughter, come home. While heads about and eyes are closed. You say, Brother Thomas, I'm not sure about the new song. I like to sing the song of the redeemed. I want to sing of the salvation song. If that is your desire, while heads about and eyes are closed, would you pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Give me a new song, song of the redeemed. If that's what you pray, would you lift up your right hand? Say, Brother Thomas, pray for me. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Praise God. Anyone else? Lord, tonight I want to leave this place with a new song.
song of the redeemed that Jesus, Jesus is the Savior of my life. Anyone else? Anyone else? Praise God. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word and its power. Seal this message, the song of the redeemed, with your Holy Spirit in our hearts. Lord, I pray for Atlanta Fest. May they continue to succeed. Provide their needs. When it's all over, I pray that every bills would be paid. All expenses covered. Souls coming to Christ. And we'll give you all praise. Amen. I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like. But I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleased and that I never long You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. What we need before we say the word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, it's who I am. 